we've reached the time of year when this is the big question to be answered. Who will become British Masters Champion for 2003? There's been a lot of racing already this season, and I'm pleased to say that the Masters is being hosted once again by the Astra Club. We saw the Masters here in the year 2000. We saw some fantastic racing. Then we saw championship taken in the sidecars by Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. But the solos, of course, went to Kelvin Sadov. Now, I want to touch on that point quickly because one of the nice things about this entry is we always look at the Masters and think, who is dedicated to grass track? Who wants to go down in the history books? Who wants the accolade of being British champion? Well, there's been so much going on through the press. I'm disappointed to say that in one way we've got the under-21s final in Sweden last night, which means there's one or two riders that ride the grass a lot and can't be here. But believe me, the entry is so big and there is such a choice of riders that whatever we end up with, we know the racing is going to be fantastic. I touched on the fact we've returned to Swingfield, hosted by the Astra Club. Well, we know that this produces some fantastic racing. A very, very big circuit, but that doesn't necessarily always play in the hands of the big motor. Now, we've got a lot of talent here, as I mentioned. I'm going to try and get a few words with some of them, but I, for one, certainly at this time of day, wouldn't want to predict who is going to be British Masters Champions for 2003. Well, of course, fantastic news to see you here, Kelvin, but I do understand that you've had to put a lot of work into trying to get here. Yeah, it's been quite a long haul, really. Um... I had a minor miracle in the week when the BSPA allowed me to ride here to give uh, my team a facility for Newcastle today, so that was great, but had to ride at Workington last night and a double header on Friday, so um, we've done about 840 miles to get here, <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a bit of a roundabout trip, but uh, delighted to be here. Yeah, I mean, I think when I talked to a lot of the riders this morning, I'm hearing about Amanda's meeting over in Italy, Joe's had to race back overnight, we know that the under-21s were over in Sweden last night, we're missing a few names there, Yeah. and I think it's, it's fabulous for the public to know there's so much going on in the background isn't there between the sports and what we can't forget is that this has been a sport that you've pursued a lot you've got this possibly is going to be what the fifth title now well possibly yeah obviously it's going to be a hard day but certainly i wanted to be here and uh, i tried very hard to make sure that it happened it, 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 on tuesday night i wasn't sure at all that i'd be able to come so fortunately uh, i've got to thank the bspa on this time because they allowed me to be here and as I said before, I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. So, yeah. And yeah, sure, you know, everybody, you know, we're riding all over Europe and all different places. Um, but I think that also shows that people are keen to ride in this championship. Well, I think that's very true. And that really was the point I wanted to raise from this because it is a championship that's recognised as one that everybody wants to win. Sure. You know, you've ridden this track before. Mm. You know the setup of the Masters. It's points all the way through, isn't it? It's yeah. a tough day's racing. Yeah, you can't make a slip up. You know, you've got to concentrate right from the word go. Um, and it can work for you, it can work against you. You know, you can have one of those days where you do brilliantly and then blow it in the final, or you can sort of like have a situation where you, you're on form all day. But uh, I know the system, you've got to be in there with shout every time. You can't drop too many points, otherwise you're going to blow it. So you've got to keep your concentration all day. Well, I'm sure you will, Kevin. Great to see you here. Thanks. Have a very good day. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Well, I know I could easily say that the sidecar competition is very open. It always is in the British Masters. But I think, Ivan Matthews, what I've got to say to you is you must be due for one soon, aren't you? Oh, well, that's put the mockers on it for a start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah, every year we come here and think we can win it, as do about 17 other people, I think. So, But, uh, no, you've, on this one day, you've got a bit of luck with you, running with you, and a couple of times in the last couple of years we haven't. Uh, maybe other people have, but, um, no, I mean, yeah, we're going to give it our best shot. Well, I'm sure you'll give it the best shot, but it really is a lovely circuit for the sake cars, isn't it? Yeah, and it seems to get better every time we come here. It certainly gets a bit smoother as the ripples come off it. But, yeah, I mean, it's a good, big, fast track, which is what we like. Um, so, yeah, no, it is a good sidecar track. And, Tony, I'll bring you in quickly on that one because you've been doing a lot of racing just recently. You know, is this a good time of year for the Masters? Oh, yeah, it's perfect. I mean, look at the day. It's sun shining, it's dry. It's, it's what we want, really. It's a perfect day for it. Let's just hope that we can get a change of look and go out and win it today. Well, the one thing I'm saying to a lot of the ride is obviously this point system going all the way through. You, you can't afford to drop a point in any race, can you, really? No, nah, not, not at all. You know, it's going to be that close with everybody there. So, yeah, just try the best in it and do what we can. Well, I'm sure you both will. I'm sure you'll be there on the rostrum at the end of the day. Very best of luck. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. Cheers, man. Have the quickest of words, really. Rob Wills, it's great to see you back. I know the problems you had with the speedway, but you've been out for practice already. Is it tough? 
No, it's good. I mean, the track's in lovely condition and, and um, touch wood so far. They don't seem to be giving me too much grief, you know? No, no, norm, no different than normal, really. Oh, that's good news, and obviously a lot of the crowd, I'm sure, will be pleased to hear that. Um, seriously, though, you know, do you think you could do it today? Uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully we could. I mean, obviously we, we need to have a bit of lady luck with us, and I think whoever wins it needs to have that with, with them, like, you know, but... Uh, you know, it's hard and it's tough and you need to be fully fit and obviously I'm not at the moment, but uh, yeah, like I said, touch wood, hopefully we'll be thereabouts, you know. Well, excellent. I mean, I'll leave you to it. I know there's a lot to be done, but great to see you back, Rob. Right. Best of luck today. Cheers, Jim. Cheers, Cheers mate. Bye. Well, I think um, I've said a lot about the championships. I've said a lot about how the points work all the way through the meeting. But one thing I think I want to touch on with you, Duncan, is the fact that you've done it the hard way. You've had to come through the qualifier, haven't you? Yeah, we had to um, go to qualify this year, which yeah, which wasn't a problem. It's another competitive race, and yeah, it was quite hard to do that really. But big worry of not making it today. But that's the only that's the only problem with the race, because yeah, it's another good race meeting. It is a good race meeting, and of course now you know we put all that behind us. You're here today, a lot of tough competition in the side cars, but you've been having some good rides just recently. You must be thinking there might be a chance. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, obviously we are thinking there's a chance, you know, there's, but there's a chance for about probably a real good realistic chance for probably about four or five, maybe six other people, you know, so yeah, we're in there with them, I believe, so yeah, we're going to give it a bit, so we've put a lot in today, and like, yeah, people around me have really helped today, and yeah, we'll just see how it goes. And... Oh, fantastic, I mean, I know you've ridden this circuit many times, I've said to a lot of the riders, really, it's, it looks from the crowd perspective as being a great grass track circuit. Been out for practice, what does it feel like? Yeah, we've just been out there, and yeah, in all fairness, it's probably as good today as it's ever been, really. I don't know why, it's obviously a lot more on it. We know the ground's hard at the moment, but they've managed to soften it, and yeah, that's the, yeah, it's making it good at the moment. Oh, that's just excellent, hoping yeah. we keep the dust down, that's the... Well, absolutely. I know they're a hard working club. The racing we've seen here before has been absolutely tip top, so there's no reason why whoever wins today won't be a real champion. Dunk, the very best of luck. Thanks. Cheers. I think at this time of day there are so many questions I could ask about the format as I've been speaking to a lot of the riders about the way that we're scoring points all through the day. But Mitch, do you think that really does make a difference with this sort of competition that you know you've got to ride hard every single race, haven't you? Um, yes, you have, but um, it definitely helps. You know, if everything's it's a level playing field and everything's even, um, and then it's down to you. Um, it's I think it's definitely better if. If it's completely random, and, and uh, yeah, if everything, if everyone's happy, it's all level, and um, that's that's better for I think for the riders in general. Um, well, indeed, I mean I'd add to that. Also, you know, I think that we get it across to the public that you know everybody's up against each other all the way through the heat. But even somebody who might have a fantastic final, you know, they might go out there and win it unless they've done well all the way through the day. You know, it's not a straightforward victory, is it? On no, one race? and I, I think that the thing you have to remember is generally the person who stands on that rostrum at the end of the day has been the best. Um, Absolutely. And you can't you can't knock anyone who's been there, whether it's Paul or Kelvin or whoever, on the day they were the best. However they got there, however the heats were, they're the best. Um, you know, and you can't take any anything away from those guys, and you know it's fantastic for them really. Yeah and I think uh, talking to a lot of the riders obviously this is a busy busy time for the world of track racing I mean we've got the under 21's final over in Sweden last night I'm hearing that Joe's travelled overnight you know Kelvin's been swapping and changing speedway fixtures you know <laughs> I think probably what I'm trying to say it, you know people do like this sort of track they like this sort of setup. it is a championship people want to win isn't it? Oh for sure I mean you know the effort that some of the guys have made you know, for me, coming 30 miles away, it's kind of easy, <laughs> you know, and, and yesterday I was in the garden with the kids, so yeah, and I wasn't tearing me somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah, the effort that, you know, that people make, and we, you know, and, and then again, there are other championships that we, we have to go all the way to Bordeaux, or we have to go all the way to Munich, and, Absolutely. you know, it, it swings around about, so it's, it's nice sometimes when, when all those French come over here, because they, they know how far we've got to drive now, <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, we're very lucky today. The, the track is superb, you know. Graham puts on a, you know, a good show, you know, the, and and he will be rewarded by the amount of people that are here. Um, yeah, the, you know, the Grand Slam was a good day, and, um, yeah, well done, Graham. Well, it's building the sport well, isn't it? I mean, I think you're right. We're going to see a big crowd. I think one thing for sure, we're going to see some great racing. So, Mitch, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. The very much. best luck. Take Cheers. care. Well, as I've mentioned, a lot of the riders, tough competition today. 
We know it's one that everybody wants to win, but John, you are the defending champion without putting too much pressure back on you. You know, you're having a good time at the moment. Super Cup champions on the speedway, so a lot of eyes be looking in your direction, I'm sure. Yeah, very much so. I think they've been looking at us now for the last three or four years, but um, we've got used to the pressure now. We've just got to come here and treat this as another national meeting and make the final. That's all important, and, and then anything can happen. So it's just, yeah, make the final, really. Yeah, it's um, really, I think, with this championship, nice to see that, you know, when I look at the solo class, I know that we've got a lot of riders that want to be here, but there's riders pressing to get in, all the rest of it. But in the sidecar world, we've really now got really a top <coughs> echelon of riders, haven't we, that you're up against each other every week. And none of us, I don't think, can predict who's going to do the winning. Not very much so. I think over the last three or four years, I, I think it probably could do, have done something with the Super Cup because the, the, the competition has increased now, now and, and there's a lot of riders pushing to get in. And like you say, there's riders that aren't even in the Masters that, you know, they, they can pop a victory here and there. So, no, it's good competition at the moment. Yeah, great to see you. And Jason, if I can just bring you in quickly, because I know it's a busy time of year for grass track and all the rest of it, but this is a super track, isn't it? Oh yeah, and, and Graham's done a lot of work with it. I spoke to him in the week. It's been lengthened each end, load of water going on. So it's going to be grippy. It's going to be fast. You know, it's going to be down to trapping. I think today, because if you don't, I think you can get filled in with a bit of dirt. So, heading <laughs> gear on the line today. That's it. So we've heard the technical bit. <laughs> Best luck, guys. <laughs> Thanks right, very much. Guys. Cheers. Well, I think when we get to this time of day, there's a lot of riders I speak to. But Richard, I know from watching you all season, you're getting faster and faster. I understand now that you're doing a lot on speedway circuits. What do you make of a track like this one? It's a lot different to a speedway track. It's a lot faster. And I'm just uh, struggling with speed, but I'm quite nearly getting there. Nearly getting there, but I think um, from what I saw in practice, you're going as quick as most of them. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to say until we get in the first race and see who's the fastest. Yeah, and I think one of the things about the, the Masters Championship, really, that I've been talking to a lot of riders about, is it, it points all the way through. So it's going to show consistency of riding this afternoon. And when you say it is big and it's fast, I mean, the experience you've had now travelling over to some of the continental circuits, do you think that's going to help you? Yeah, it's going to help me a lot. The speed is going to help me with the gate, and the gun track's going to help me with the, the top, uh, top end speed. Excellent. So we can expect some big things from you today. We'll try. <laughs> well, very best of luck, mate. Thank you. Great to speak to you. Cheers. Cheers. Right at the very beginning, we're right on the five. Not in your programme for the late entry due to some fantastic decisions being made. Number five is Kelvin Sixer. Well, what about the next rider then? Joe Screen rode in Italy last night. He travelled all the way over here. He's here for the British Masters, 17 this afternoon. Joe Screen! Yeah. Number 58 from the other minister is Mark Gilbert. Yeah. Number 4 will ride in the Italy classroom class for the time. Number 74, Greg Stevens, Bob Wilson. Another one of those riders that 
Rangers is hoping to get into the championship this afternoon. He's been out of reserve. Julian Fitch. Number 98. He's been around the world on track circuit for many years now. Great to see him in the last years. Here we come again. Rider number seven is the same words, Gary Knight. Number one fight to the runner who's making up all the time, Matt Ray. And next to him, we have a camera that's already coming in here for the breaking finger. That of course is Jason Hanley. Number one, I'm looking for a very casual player and uh, exciting rider, Jason Bunyan. Aye. Number 25, another rider that came through as a top point scorer from the morning line, and of course it's never tasted them. <laughs> Number 125, Martin Williams. <laughs> and the last one or so that we're going to sign up for CD. Well, I'm going to try to time this time. <laughs>
so the riders making their way to the start line for the very start of the 2003 British Masters. This is the first heat of the day. Race one in your program. On page eight, you'll find it. But we see out for the first time. Jason Hanley, Nathan Irwin, Gareth Hicknock, Paul Knott, Martin Williams, Martin Sturgeon, Jason Bunyan, and Mitch Cotton. an early impression on the British Masters for 2003. They get underway and as they go up that back straight now, looks very much like it. Going through, pretty much for you as they come down across me. I'm looking for Jason Hanley perhaps. And as they go past me, it is Hanley that leads from number 29, Paul Knott, a good ride for him. And uh, Jason Hanley setting the pace as he goes wide on that pit bend and up the back straight for the second time. <laughs> Pulls it in tightly. Where Jason Bunyan is, for instance. Jason Hanley is leading certainly from Paul Knott. Jason Bunyan in third place at the moment. Mitch Gordon in fourth. So can they catch that front runner? Jason Hanley looks over his shoulder. Knows he's got a bit of a margin now. Very controllable bend. Paul Knott now beginning to come under pressure from Jason Bunyan in second. Well, again, interesting to see that Jason Bunyan has taken a very wide line around that pit turn. He's certainly got the advantage now on his second place. He's making it back and goes into the last turn. It's the long way around and cuts back underneath. Tries to find a drive on the inside. It's going to be close as they come to the line. Paul Knott getting second place though. Jason Bunyan in third, Mitch Gordon in fourth, and Martin Williams in fifth place. The day, a tremendous start to his day's racing for number 95, that's Jason Hanley, it's 95 that goes in first place. Followed home in second by number 29, Paul Knott. In third place, number one, Jason Bunyan. In fourth place, number nine, Mitch Gordon. Fifth place, number one, two, five, Martin Williams. Sixth place, number 15, Martin Sturgeon. Seventh place, number seven, Gareth Hicknott. Eighth place, number 83, Nathan Irwin. And the winning time, 125.34. 125.34, that's an average of 58.38 miles per hour. So the riders for race two up on that start line already. We see out for the first time this afternoon, Matt Reed, Neville Tatum, Wayne Barrett, Mark Ferry, Scott Wilson, Mark Chilman, Mark Taylor, and Joe Screen. Well, of course, the qualifier for the British Masters this year, they only completed three heats in both solo and sidecar. It meant that Matt Reed, Chris Harris, and Neville Tatum all finished on maximum 30 points from three rides. I always wonder whether somebody can actually win the qualifying championships. Driving off the top of the hill is Joe Screen that's got the lead from Matt Reed in second. Oh, number 26, Mark Giles, is uh, out there. So, in fact, there's no Wayne Barrett. I didn't see him in the pits this morning. Mark Giles is certainly out there taking his place. Matt trying to stay with Joe Screen. But it's Joe Screen that's setting the pace. Matt Reed trying to stay with him. Now Taylor moving through in the third in front of Mark Giles in fourth. Mark Taylor in fifth. But all eyes, I'm sure, on the leader, Joe Screen. Very casually goes up the back straight. He's been the last half they go. Oh, what can Joe Screen do today? He told me that it was uh, a four o'clock flight back from Italy last night that got him here this morning. He rode in the Amanda Cassania meeting over there in Italy last night. He said that was the end of the position is he in as he pushed all the way to the line as he gets the checkered bag. Joe Screen can still win. Matt Reed in second, Neville Tatum in third, and Mark Giles in fourth. Race two in program, won by rider number 17, that's Joe Screen. In second place, number 152, Matt Reed. 
In third place, number 25, Neville Tatum. Fourth place, number 26, that's reserve coming in, Mark Giles. In fifth place, number 170, Mark Taylor. Sixth place, number 74, Scott Wilson. Seventh place, number 188, Mark Ferry. And eighth place, number 58, Mark Gilman. 123.72 was the winning time, 123.72. 59.51 they average, 59.51, so getting slightly quicker in race two. Andrew Moore, of course, his place being taken by number five, Kelvin Tatum. We've got going with them, Darren Rolfe, John Pepper and Craig Smith. So a lot of work behind the scenes to get his ride here this afternoon for Kelvin Tatum. Is he going to make this one his? I'm sure there's a lot of you out there think that uh, he might be able to repeat what he's done in uh, 2001, 2000, 1999 and 1996. Can he make it five British Masters? Four in a row, in fact. As they get him underway, they cross the back straight and he's going to the outside as he gets into that first turn. He's going at the front though as he comes out of the turn. Down past me, they come for the first time. It's Glenn Cunningham that he's got there with him. Lewis Adams up in third place. A terrific ride from him to start the day. Into the pit bend they go. He's got some very quick riders in front of him. Calvin Tatum, of course, goes so long. Oh, he looks like he's in determined mood. Glenn Cunningham still there in second. Richard Hall now made a good little battle with Lewis Adams there in that third place. It's that distinctive lay down style of Richard Hall on the outside of Lewis Denham. Great battle going on with the place. Tries to set the inside of him again. That distinctive lay down style of Richard Hall. All the way around the outside. His mate Jimmons on that top end. He gets himself through to third. But Lewis Denham's not letting him go, is he? He's coming back at him. And look at the way that gap is up and up between number one and the Check a flag it is this time. Kelvin Tatum takes it. Glenn Cunningham in second place. Richard Hall's got that third spot from Lewis Denham in fourth. And it's going to be close to the line, but it looks like Neil Taylor picks up the fifth. Because we start with going into first place, number five, Kelvin Tatum. In second place, number 98, Glenn Cunningham. In third, that's 30, Richard Hall. In fourth place, number 81, Lewis Denham. In fifth place, number 173, Neil Taylor. Sixth place, number 41, that's Darren Rolfe. And seventh place, number three, John Pepper. Eighth place, number two, Craig Smith. And the winning time, well, we said we'd see if it gets a bit quicker as they go on. Race three, we get 119.65, 119.65, an incredible 62.54. 62.54, incredible, 62.54, 62.54, Kelvin average. They're into that first turn, as they come down past me for the first time, we've got out in front, number 37, that's Roy Lobb. Well, he's quickly under pressure from Jeremy Doncaster, but he's still got the lead at the moment as he goes up the back straight. He's Jeremy Doncaster in second. Roger Lobb's still leading. Jeremy Doncaster now getting into the back. Roger Lobb, has he left the gap on the inside? Certainly Jeremy Doncaster's looking for it. He may well force the issue in this bit bend, but Roger's certainly motoring on the outside. Well, in fact, Jeremy Doncaster has forced the issue. He's got himself through. He, in fact, is still Now, can Roger hang on to that second place? Because third and fourth are in the battle, pushing each other along. They're getting closer to that second spot. It's Trevor Banks on the outside. It's the youngster Paul Cooper on the inside, who we saw have such a fantastic qualifying ride in the world long track at Tunbridge. Well, he's showing us what he can do in the British Masters. He's now got himself that third place. He's showing Trevor Banks going after Roger Lobb. He's checked the flag this time as they come down past me. Jeremy Doncaster gets it. Going to be close to second. Roger Lobb hangs on. Paul Cooper in third. Leading the first leg rides for the solo competition. A win for rider number six, 
Jeremy Doncaster. Second place, number 37, Roger Lobb. In third place, number 11, Paul Cooper. Fourth place, number 4, Andrew Appleton. And fifth place, number 12, Trevor Banks. Sixth place, number 10, Dave Romsey. Seventh place is 121, Daniel Winterton. And eighth place is 44, Andrew Rowe. 122.14 was the winning tie, 122.14. So we have stayed up there in the 60 mile an hour bracket, 60.65, that averaged. Well, that was fast and furious. The first four heats, the first legs of the ACU, Speedway Star British Masters of 2003. Wins for Jason Hanley, Joe Screen, Kelvin Tatum, and in that last ride there, Jeremy Doncaster. They get maximum 10 points. And uh, we now turn our attention to the sidecar competition. Race 5 in your programme. And I was given the information about um, Rob Bradley. He went out for practice first thing this morning. He blew the engine apart, so he's been frantically working away putting another engine in. It took him all of practice to get it in, get it all set up, so he was granted a two lap practice before the sidecar heats. And in fact, looking, he's out in heat two. So hopefully, if he finds anything he hasn't done quite right, he can get right before he gets was here at uh, Swingfield, won by Rob Wilson and Tony Miles. And uh, back a bit further, 99, John Halsey, Jason Glennie. But uh, looking at the qualifier this year, obviously I mentioned in the solo competition, it was the same for the sidecars, three rides only in the Clubman's Championships, the British Masters qualifier. Mick Turrell and Tony Baseby, Andy Simons and Gary Bester, Duncan Tollis and Nicky Owen all finished on 19 points and three rides. So uh, let's see if uh, any one of those can actually go through and take the Clubman Championships and the British Masters. Could it be done? Well, they get underway. A very quick start from Gary Jackson into that first turn. He's pursued by Ivor Matthews and Tony Miles in second place. Very close to them. They didn't get away with everybody else. A long way back and a lot of ground to make up. But at the front of the field, in this, the first of the sidecars this afternoon, it's Gary Jackson and Carl Pugh. Followed by Ivor Matthews and Tony Miles, one of those from the qualifier. Mick Turrell got through into third place, holding a good position. Very, very quick indeed. Ivor Matthews and Tony Miles in second far back it was that Gary Jackson took the British Masters and my records show me that it was 1996 that he got it he was second in 95 he was second again in 99 One more lap to go then for Gary Jackson and Carl Pugh to take the maximum points on their first ride. Ivor Matthews and Tony Moles sitting there in second. Ivor Matthews has made sure that he's going to get the uh, points for second place as the checkered flag is made, made ready. And as they come to the line, Gary Jackson gets maximum points. Ivan Matthews in second, Nick Terrell in third, and Rick McCall in fourth. First of the sidecars, a win for outfit number 23, Gary Jackson and Carl Pugh. Outfit number 23 it is that goes in first place in race five. Follow home in second by number 15, Ivor Matthews and Tony Miles. In third place, number 62, Mick Turrell and Tony Basby. Fourth place, number 51, Rick McCauley and Phil Stoneman. Fifth place, number 93, Andy Simons and Gary Femister. And sixth place, number two, Steve Smith and Carl Squirrel. 
142.82 was the winning time, 142.82, 54.93 the average speed. So, 54.93, we'll keep an eye on the time and the average speed, of course, as we look now for race six. My solar is informed by my lap scorers here, we've got such good memories. <laughs> the uh, happy birthday goes to John Holder, who's here today and is 70 today. Hope you enjoy your racing still, John. And that comes from your daughters and all their families, etc. with race six in your program. This is heat two. Press them out for all of these selling cars. And Rob Bradley has made the best of the start. Uh, Rob Bradley and Tristan Winterburn go in that first turn. The rest sort themselves out. It's Paul White's up in second. And they race coming off the top of the hill. It is Rob Bradley and Tristan Winterburn that lead. Paul White, and Kevin Jones in there in second place. Oh, who's going to be sitting there in third at the moment? It is 184, John Hiscock and Simon Wall. Colin Blackbourne is there in fourth place at the moment. They follow each other into that top turn. Great, great start for Bradley and Tristan Winterburn. They shared the honours, of course, back in 2000 when, of course, uh, they shared it with Gary Jackson. And he looks down at machinery, he's been working on it for the last two hours. And I'm sure he'll be pleased with the way he's performing at the moment. Oh, really in that second place, John Hiscock and Simon Wall trying to close the gap. But it looks very, very quick indeed as they go into the last lap then. Oh, a little bit of a battle down there at the back of the field. Miles Simmons trying to make sure that he's finishing his first team. Looking to try and pass the ball quickly as they get that last train. But if you're keeping your eyes on the front of the field, it's perhaps a challenge for a second that we might see as they come to the line because over the checkered flag they go. Rob Bradley gets a win first time out. Paul Whiteland in second. John Hiscock in third. Colin Blackburn in fourth. And Paul Bickley wins the battle for that fifth place. cars this afternoon. Race 6 in your programme, heat 2 of the first leg, a win for number 87, Rob Bradley and Tristan Winterburn. In second place, number 92, Paul Whiteland and Kevin Jones. Third place, number 184, John Hiscock and Simon Wall. And in fourth place, number 25, Colin Blackbourne and Martin Bailey. Fifth place, number 8, Paul Bickley and Terry Madley. And sixth place, number 9, Miles Simmons, Dave Hogan. 141.60 was the winning time, 141.60, 55.59 the average speed. So a little bit quicker than we saw in race 5, what will we see in race 7? We've got out for the first time, Rob Wilson and in well, John Halsey, Jason Glenny, Rob Winterburn, Tris Winterburn. Number five, Matt Pomerola and Andy Wilson. Number 69, Matthew Turrell and Sean Yates. And number 74, Duncan Tolhurst and Nicky Owen. The cars, race seven in your program. Last year's defending champion, John Halsey and Jason Glennie, up against the return of, to the sport of uh, 2000's winner, Rob Wilson and Ian Whale. We've got uh, Duncan Tolhurst and Nicky Owen, who rode brilliantly at the Clubman's Championship. So what can they do in this, their first ride this afternoon? Come past me. All together, John Halsey just about making the break. But Duncan Tolles has got the better of it on the inside. As he overshot that first bend, John Halsey he hopes so, and he's come through on the inside of him. But as they go down at the back straight, Duncan Tolles looks very quick, and he's catching John Halsey as they go into this pit turn for the first time. Two riders together in that third and fourth place. I think it's Matt from on the inside, and Matt from has come through in the second. Matt from Merler from fourth to second in that pit end. Duncan Torres is forced to go very wide. We've got Robin and Chris Winterburn on the inside of them. And Matt from Merler is pushing on John Wilson and Jason Glennie in that structure. Now it's the pit end that he went best of all. What can you do?
can he do this time? He closes up again, he's right on the back wheel of John Halsey. Tries to hold it tight and Matt from Road looks to be coming from the inside. John Halsey and Jason Getty react strongly though, they pull away going up the finishing straight. Duncan is back on song and back on the racing line, but again, look at Matt from Roller pushing John Halsey and Justin Gurney. Yeah, we know these two men the one they were better at the end of this bottom turn last night. They were very, very quick going in. They've done exactly the same thing again. They're still managing to hold it tight though as they come round that pit bend. One more lap to go. John Halsey knows he's got somebody pushing him. Oh, Rob Wilson finding a way at the back of the field at the moment, trying to get round Rob and Chris Winderburn. Duncan told us has now again started to close up on Matt from Roller. It's going to be close to the line, but John Halsey and Jason Denny, the defending champions of 2002, are going to be pushed all the way. But they take the win. Matt from Roller gets second. Duncan told us in third. Rob and Chris Winterburn in fourth, and Rob Wilson in fifth. Well, I said on paper it looked possibly the strongest of the three heats. It turned out to be an absolute cracker. And it's somebody like Matt from Roller and Andy Wilson who pulled a surprise in the Super Cup first round. Can they do it again today? Of the uh, sidecar hits for the first leg, a win for the defending champions, number 13, John Rosey and Jason Glennie. In second place, number five, a great ride from Matt Marola and Andy Wilson. Third place, number 74, Duncan Tolrest and Nicky Owen. Fourth place, number 148, Rob Winterburn and Chris Winterburn. Fifth place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Ian Whale. And sixth place, number 69, Matthew Terrell and Sean Yates, the winning time, 143.06, 143.06, 54.80, the average speed, 54.80. Now we go over the page and we will be seeing the um, solos back out for their second ride. But I thought there was going to be a bit of work on the track before that happened. They're all being waved in now. One or two of them decided to go and have another look at the track itself. But now the last of the competitors, I can just see through the binoculars, have been uh, beckoned to the start line. And Lewis Denham first to the tapes. Kelvin Tatum's right on the outside. He's got Richard Hall with him as well. So see some quick starts from the outside and that's exactly what happens Kelvin Tatum picking it up but here's Andrew Appleton that's made the best of the runs in the first turn underneath his nose he goes into that first turn so coming very high and wide coming out of the bend it is Kelvin Tatum that leaves from Andrew Appleton in second place Paul Cooper's up in the third Jason Bunyan wants that third though he's got through on the inside of Paul Cooper we lose Paul Cooper in the dust on that pit turn but he comes back and he's back in thick place Problems. Oh, Taylor falls out on the tip of the circuit. He's hit problems, so Andrew Appleton takes over quickly. Jason Bunyan in second, Richard Hall in third. Well, one of the things I was talking to Kelvin about this morning was the consistency of this point scoring through this competition. He's now made it tough for himself because he's in the second place. The rest of the competitors, I'm sure, won't mind if they now streak past me. It's Andrew Appleton that's leading. From Jason Bunyan, from Richard Hall, from Paul Cooper. Paul Cooper looking to have a go for third. He's up against uh, Richard Hall, two of the young stars of the future, perhaps racing together in third place. Paul Cooper on the inside, Richard Hall on the outside. If he's back in the three seasons, these are names you should remember for the future because these two youngsters are coming on very, very strongly. As the tape goes, you can see that Paul Cooper wins the battle for third. And not forgetting Lewis Denham in there behind them as well. And the drama starts already. We see Kelvin Tatum come to be leading, pulling out and making his way back to the pits. The win in the end was for the number four. Much better ride from him, Andrew Appleton. In second place, number one, Jason Bunyan. 
In third place, number 11, Paul Cooper. Fourth place, number 30, Richard Hall. Fifth place, number 81, Lewis Denham. Sixth place, 58, Mark Shillman. No seventh place there. Three should have been there, but unfortunately excluded for going off the circuit. 122.81 was the winning time. 122.81, 60.16, the average speed. So 60.16. So we move to race nine, and already they're underway, and I'll do that first. He's trying to make his way through on the inside, he's got Trevor Banks with him though as he comes off that turn. And Trevor Banks goes very, very wide, but Joe Screen stays with him. Roger Lobb is up there in third place, Jimmy Gordon in fourth. But it's Joe Screen that's now looking to stamp his authority as he goes up to the back straight. Trevor Banks trying to stay with him. Joe Screen make it two out of two. Pumping away on that throttle as he comes out of that bend. Once more out of it. Still Trevor Banks in second, but he's under pressure now from the youngster Roger Lobb, and Roger Lobb moves through in the second place. Oh, brilliant corner for Roger Lobb. Got himself into second, and there's a big gap between him and Joe Screen. Roger should be pleased with the points for second place. Mitch Gordon still there in third, Jason Hanley still holding fourth, and remember Jason Hanley had a win first time out. So we've seen three of our first leg winners out in their second leg. Joe Screen at the moment, the only one who's making that together. Into the checker flag he goes, he makes it two out of two. Roger Lobb in second, Trevor makes it in third, Mitch Gordon in fourth, Jason Hanley in fifth. And uh, we've had yet another exclusion for takes being taken out. A win for number 17. There's no dispute about that one. That's number 17, Joe Screen. Two rides and two wins. In second place, number 37, Roger Lobb. In third place, number 9, Mitch Godden. In fourth place, number 95, Jason Hanley. In fifth place, number 173, Neil Taylor. Sixth place, number 121, Daniel Winterton. The winning time was 122.21. Point... <laughs> Do apologise, I can't read my own writing. 122.49, 60.40, 60 60.40. And I'm disappointed to say that it was number 12, Trevor Banks, that was excluded for going off the third. Thanks, Al. Now... Race 10, it is underway and already down past us and Neville Tatum is leading as they go into that bottom turn. Now I'm looking for Jeremy Doncaster in this one, he's in third place at the moment, trying to find his way through. Oh, Tatum having a brilliant ride at the moment, looks over his shoulder. Jeremy Doncaster in second, it was Glenn Cunningham that was in that third place. Those three away from the rest of the field a bit. And can Jeremy Doncaster close down Neville Tatum? He's got a... ...wondering if Glenn Cunningham might pull him out of the bag today. He sits there in third place. Gareth Hickmott is the rider that's leading the battle for fourth place. Made ready. Jeremy Doncaster had a win first time out, looking to be comfortable in second this time. And Neville Tatum takes the win. Jeremy Doncaster gets second. Glenn Cunningham wins third. Of race 10, that was number 25, Neville Tatum. In second place, number 6, Jeremy Doncaster. Third place, number 98, Glenn Cunningham. Fourth place, number seven, Gareth Hickmott. Fifth place, number 74, Scott Wilson. Sixth place, number 44, Adrian Rowe. Seventh place, 188, Mark Ferry. And then the winning time, 121.26, 121.26, 61.31, they're averaging. They're getting much quicker again. You can see a change here that number 26 Mark Giles will come out in place of uh, Wayne Barrett hasn't showed today. 
started to open up a bit for Matt Reed. He's making this one look comfortable. He's going to the top turn for the second time. This, of course, is their second ride. Paul Knott going very, very wide coming off that top turn. He's got it up into the fourth place. And, uh, he did have a second
Could um, Steph Blythe make his way to Colin Blackburn's machine? Steph Blythe, could you make your way to Colin Blackburn's machines, please? First of the second leg rides for the sidecars. A win for number 87, Rob Bradley and Tristan Winderburn. That makes it two out of two for them. In second place, number 92. In fact, two second places for Paul Whitelump, Kevin Jones. Third place goes to number 13, John Halsey and Jason Glenny. Fourth place, number 62, Mick Torrell and Tony Baseby. Fifth place, number two, Steve Smith and Carl Squirrel. The winning time, 143.77, 143.77, 54.43 they averaged, as we indeed are underway with race 13. And uh, I'm going to go into that first turn, it's all very, very tight. Matt Fromm Roller trying to work his way through on the inside, but it was Robert Chris Winterburn that made it on that first turn. They've got Colin Blackboard and Martin Bailey in second spot to them as they go into this pit bend. Oh, picking it up for you as they come past me. It is the lead with Robin Chris Swinderburn. Colin Blackburn in second. Duncan Torres is in there in third place with Matt from Roller in fourth at the moment. Oh, can it change on that top bend? Matt from Roller must be struggling to see in that top bend. He's slowed indeed because of the thick bend. And he's lost the place to Rick McCauley as they go down that back straight. So three finding in out of the front. Duncan Torres sitting in that third place, trying to find a way through, but Robin Chris Swinderburn are keeping away from Colin Blackburn. Into the top of end they go for the first time. And you can see this Duncan Torres is closing. Colin Blackburn, he's found a way through and Duncan Torres is up in a second. Now, uh, Rob and Chris Winterburn have been allowed the time to get away. He said Duncan Torres has got a lot of work to do on this last lap. I wonder if he could possibly do it. He goes into that top end. Still sitting with Colin McWhorn and I think the gap is too big. Duncan Torres goes down the back straight in his second spot. Rob Lewis Winterburn are going to get the win by the look of it as they come around off that pit bend. It will be checkered flag for them this time as they come to the line. They take the win, their first of the afternoon. Duncan Torres gets second, Colin Blackburn in third, Rick McCauley in fourth and Matt from Roller in fifth. It was 8-2 of the second leg rides for the sidecars. A win for number 148, that is Rob and Chris Winterburn. In second place, number 74, Duncan Tolles and Nicky Owen. In third place, number 25, Colin Blackburn and Martin Daly. Fourth place, number 51, Rick McCauley and Phil Stoneman. Fifth place, number 5, Matt Pomerola and Andy Wilson. Sixth place, number 93, Andy Simons and Gareth Bemister. The winning time, 144.24, 144.24, 54.43. Well, you always get a bit of controversy at the British Masters final, and um, Duncan always seems to be in the thick of it. I don't know why, but he was excluded here for what they termed as over-exuberant riding. Well, fair enough, he went for the gap, and I think Colin may well have turned in on him, but... That's my own opinion from where I was filming from. Um, this view possibly gives another view, but it's down to the riders. They know the gap's there. Sometimes they go for the gap and it will disappear. And other riders might not know they're coming. So I think it was six of one and half a dozen of the other, really. But he, unfortunately, he was totally excluded from the race. We
Well, we've got race 14 underway and they're down past me very quickly indeed. And as they go into that first turn, I think that's John Hiscock that's made the best of it as they go into that first turn. Ivor Matthews is right there with him though. And it's Ivor Matthews that comes down. The best man for that first turn going down the back straight. Oh, Rob Wilson coming through into third place, going the long way round on that pit bend. It's getting very, very uh, dusty on that bottom turn. Has Rob made it all the way around the outside? Uh, I think indeed he lost out, and I've noticed now that we've got Gary Jackson in there as well in fourth place. You remember, he had a win first time out this afternoon. He's sitting back in fourth place, and Ivor Matthews has made the best of it. He's got John Hiscock and Simon Wall in second place to him. Well, certainly the uh, thick dust beginning to take its toll on the riders further down the field. And Rob Wilson a long way back at the moment. Well, Gary Jackson. Gary Jackson in front. Looks like a see Gary Jackson stops on the top end. He pulls up into the inside. So while all that's going on behind him, Ivan Matthews and Tony Miles won't mind as they see the last lap flag. They know they're clear. They've got John Hiscock trying to close the gap on him. And Miles Simmons having a much better ride this time. He's up in third place. Matthew Tyrrell is the rider in fourth. And then Rob Wilson is definitely trying to find a way through. And nowhere at the moment. He said the first time he was out. It's good to see him out there competing. But he is coming back from a broken bone in his leg. And uh, we will see the checkered flag go this time. Ivan Matthews gets his first win of the afternoon. John Hiscock in second, Miles Simmons in third, Matthew Tour in fourth. Second leg rides for the sidecars. A win for outfit number 15. Maximum seven points. Ivan Matthews and Tony Miles. In second place, number 184, John Hiscock and Simon Wall. In third place, number nine, Miles Simmons and Dave Hogan. Fourth place, number 69, Matthew Turrell and Sean Yates. Fifth place, number 24, Rob Wilson and Ian Whale. No sixth finisher there, the winning time, 143.77, 143.77, 54.43. That's the average speed, 54.43. So away we go then with the first of the third leg rise. Race 15 in your programme, they get underway. Can I see the red flag on the start? So not happy with the start at all. So the riders pull back to the start line once again. I remind you this is a race 15 in your programme. We're starting the third leg rise for the solo competitors. Underway, I can see that we've got one rider left. Going to the field again. As they come off the top bend, it is Neville Tatum that's got the best of the start. He had a win last time out, you remember. Trevor Banks is going with him. Jason Bunyan is right there as well on the back of Trevor Banks. So those three getting away from the rest of the field. But Neville Tatum has really started to look like he wants to make this one well his. He had a win in his second ride. Again, as he comes off that drop turn. Now, Trevor Banks sitting there in second. He's got Jason Bunyan to deal with as he goes into that bottom turn, and Jason looking for a way through on the inside. And it looks as if he's going to mount the challenge into this top end. He sits on his back wheel going up the back way. Looks for a way through on the inside. Holds it much, much tighter. Trevor going for a wide line, and Jason is right there on the inside of Trevor. Well, as he got the edge going into this bottom bend, he's forced Trevor Banks to go wide on that pit turn. 
And really this battle for second place, well, Neville Taylor has got away from them all and now he's checking, leading as he comes round off the top third. Going to be checking playing more of this time and that's two wins this afternoon and the three rides. Jason Bunny looks over his shoulder, Trevor Mains gets third. And Martin Williams gets fourth in front of Neil Taylor. In for number 25, that's Neville Tater. In second place, number one, Jason Bunyan. Third place, number 12, Trevor Banks. Fourth place, number 125, Martin Williams. Fifth place, number 173, Neil Taylor. Sixth place, number two, Craig Smith. And the winning time, 122.23, 122.23, 60.59 the average speed. So 60.59, they were travelling in a time of 122.23. So we transfer maximum 10 points for uh, Neville Tatum. Well, am I reckoning taking him on to 26? Race 16, and they're underway and up the back straight very quickly. We're picking that. Get together in that first turn. Glenn Cunningham is the rider going very, very wide off that top turn, but it's Joe Screen on the inside of him. Oh, Roger Love is the rider in third place at the moment. But Joe Screen, the one who's got maximum points, the only one who's got maximum points from two rides. Joe Green leading. Roger Lowe looks over his shoulder. He's got Andrew Apperton closely in behind him. Now, you remember Andrew had a win in his second ride. I wondered if he was. He was certainly comparable speed-wise to... One ball has to go for Joe Green. Ben Cunningham still there in second. Joe Screen uh, looking very, very comfortable indeed. He's got very quick machinery, we know. And uh, got to say, very good riding. He's been consistently well. The that he got into the British Army through the uh, championships, finished sixth in the Clubman's Championships with 22 points of the uh, third leg a win for number 17 that makes it three out of three for joe screen in second place number 98 glenn cunningham in third place number 37 roger lobb in fourth place number four andrew rappleton in fifth place number 81 in sixth place number 58 seventh place 26 and eighth place one two one one twenty two point five two was the time 60.37 the average speed, so they're all still staying up above that 60 mile an hour. In rides and uh, looking at race 17. Well, we've seen Paul Cooper going well this afternoon. We've seen Matt Reed going well. Remember, he had a win in his second ride. Jeremy Doncaster is on 18 points along with Matt Reed on 18 points. That's from the two rides. Remember, Jeremy had a win first time out. across to that dark line once again this is heat three of the third leg rides two riders on the same number of points um, 
And as they get underway, it is Matt Reed that's going into that first turn. Jared Oncaster is into second with Paul Cooper sitting on the inside of him. But it's down past me, they come, and Jeremy Doncaster is trying to take it close to Matt Reed. Paul Cooper and Mitch Gordon right there in that third and fourth place, but it's Matt Reed that's got the pressure at the moment. He leads just from Jeremy Doncaster. They go up the bank straight. Jeremy Doncaster is going to get away from him. But it's arrived once again from Matt Reed as he goes wide coming off that top turn. Oh. Jeremy Doncaster knows that he's in with a good position at the moment from two rides. Those two on exactly the same number of points. Paul Cooper going well in third place. In fact, I would say that Paul Cooper has actually closed the gap on Jeremy Doncaster. Was it simply that Jeremy is moved, losing out to Matt Reed? Matt Reed looking very comfortable to get the maximum point. He needs to check it back this time as he comes down faster. Matt Reed takes it. Jeremy Lancaster in second. Paul Cooper in third. Mitch Gordon in fourth. And he's three on the third leg and a win for number 152. That's Matt Reed keeping his campaign strong as he moves on to 28 points. In second place, number six, Jeremy Doncaster. In third place, number 11, Paul Cooper. In fourth place, number nine, Mitch Gordon. And in fifth place, number 170, Mark Taylor. Sixth place, number 15, Martin Sturgeon. Seventh place, 74, Scott Wilson. And eighth place, number 188, Mark Ferry. 121.63 with the time, 121.63, 61.03 the average speed. Well, just quickly looking at uh, race 18, of course, we've got the replacement for Andy Moore, 100, that's now number 5, Kelvin Tatum, who at the moment is uh, a race adrift on the uh, early leaders. Now, for some reason, the start are not happy with... Uh, Touching the tapes, the start are not happy. Up go the tapes and we get underway and Kelvin Taylor has made a brilliant start and he's already two or three bike lengths ahead as he goes up the back straight. Handley is right on the inside looking for that second place, but it is Kelvin Tatum that's got away. Oh, Jason Hanley in the second. Paul Knott was the rider that went very, very wide, but got himself up into the second. Richard Hall is the rider trying to go around the outside of Paul Knott for that third place. But it's Kelvin Sader with wheel in the air. That's the He's three rides and three wins. He's missed out on one ride. He looks over his shoulder. Jason Hanley still going well this afternoon. He's on 14 points from two rides. So looking for strong points from this one. Correct himself on that top bend. All not still sitting there in third, looking for Richard Hall perhaps to try and come through for that third place. But the gaps have certainly opened up as they go down the back straight. Second the and as the checkered flag comes out again, he goes very wide. And is he going to be caught on the line? It's going to be close. Kelvin Tatum, I think, has just done enough. Oh, no, not happy with things at the moment, Kelvin Tatum. Of the third leg, and it's a win for number five. That's, of course, Kelvin Tatum. In second place, number 95, Jason Handley. In third place, number 29, Paul Knott. Fourth place, number 30. Richard Hall. Fifth place, number seven, Gareth Hickmock. And sixth place, number 16, Bob Dolman. Seventh place, number 44, Andrew Rowe. And the winning time, 122.97. 122.97, 60 the average speed. So, 122.97. And I understand there will be a practice for Colin Blackbourne and then the water bouncer. So, 
The reason for the practice, he is a change of passenger for Colin Blackburn. Passenger hasn't practiced this afternoon, so they need to go out and do a quick couple of laps. race 19 and we start the sidecar competition again this is the third ride for the sidecar competitors well who's doing it with the points at the moment we've got uh, Rob uh, Bradley and uh, Tristan Winnipeg are the only ones on a maximum but in this race I was going to quickly look and see if John Horsey's back on his own machine have they done the conversion repairs whatever was necessary Second place at the moment. Very close to Ivor Matthews and Tony Miles, who are on well points in the competition so far. They sit in second place, but they're under pressure from John Halsey as they go up the straight. John Halsey's found a way through. John Halsey gets through on the inside. Ivor Matthews doesn't want to give up that position, and I can see that we've got the competition leader at the moment. Is this going to put the gun amongst the pigeons, amongst the points? Is this going to make the competition a lot closer to the end of the day? Well, we come into that bit bend again, and John Halsey and Jason Gunny have got the lead, but only just from Ivor Matthews and Tony Miles. Rob Bradley looking to have a go at Ivor Matthews as well. He leads the competition on 14 points at the moment, sitting in third place in this seat. Looking to try and find a way through in the second, perhaps, as they go into the bit turn. Down the back straight they go. John Halsey trying to open up the gaps, trying to pull away. Trying to put command on this one as he goes into the last lap, as he goes past us. There's problems for Jason Glenny. Jason Glenny has got problems. He's gone down on the side of the machine. I think he's able to stay there. Now, can he get back up again as they come out of that top bend? Because he certainly stays down as he went past in front of me. I think he has moved. He's recovered well. Rob Ross Hamley in second place, though. Ivan Matthews under pressure from Rob Bradley and Tristan Winterburn, who lead the competition at the moment. Can they make it up in the second? They come to the line. It's going to be close. But third, they've got to be content with. So, what's going to happen to the points now? As we transfer the points from that heat, that really has uh, been a battle of the top three in the competition so far. John Halsey was sitting in third, Ivan Matthews was sitting in second, and Rob Randley was leading. But it was all very close. Ride from... Uh, Outfit number 13, John Halsey and Jason Glenny, they're back on form with a win. In second place, number 15, Ivor Matthews and Tony Miles. In third place, number 87, Rob Bradley and Tristan Winterburn. In fourth place, number 62, Mick Torrell and Tony Baseby. Fifth place was number 24, Rob Wilson and Ian Whale. And sixth place, number 184, John Hiscock and Simon Wall. 142.88 was the winning time. 142.88. 54.90 the average speed, 54.90. So what has that done to the points? I make it that uh, John Halsey plus seven, taking him on to 18. Now I will say this is very unofficial. We're relying on my mental arithmetic for a start, which is always a disadvantage, right? Five points per second for Ivan Matthews. So he moves on to 17 and 87 gets four points, moves on to 18. So by my unofficial reckoning, we've now got Rob Bradley and uh, John Halsey on exactly the same points, and Ivor Matthews just one point behind them. So what's gonna happen? Can somebody else catch them up as well? Let's think about it. We've got number 92, Paul Whitlam on 10 points, as well as Robert and Chris Winderburn on 10 points. So, seven points for a ride here. They could be right up there level with Ivor Matthews on 17.
Huh? So we're underway with race 20, and as they go into that first turn, I'm well, trying to pick up for you, that is, that does look to me like... certainly is Rick McCall. Gary Jackson's in there in second place and looking for a way through as they come round that pit bend. And has he made it through? He's got through. It was Rick McCall who was leading. Matt from Roller is up in third place and very close in that third. Looking to find a way through as well. He's trying the inside line. Oh, there's a great start for Rick McCauley and uh, Bill Stoneman. They're now being pursued. Matt from Roller relaxed for the outside line. I'm sure Rick McCauley was trying to keep the door shut on the inside. Matt from Roller's gone all the way around the outside of him. That was a terrific corner from Matt from Roller. Oh, Gary Jackson and Carl Pugh have got back to the standard that they had in their first ride. I think the only disappointing one we can see at the moment is He was on 10 points from two rides. He's obviously hit some sort of problem. Now, oh, Gary Jackson. Who had a very bad ride in his second ride, has got back on form again. There must have been something wrong with the outfit that they've now managed to sort out. But Matt from Roller going well in second. So he has definitely hit some sort of problem. Now, Mark Simmons looking to have a go at Rick McCauley as well, the early leader. But as we see the checkered flag go, it's the second win of the afternoon for number 23, Gary Jackson and Carl Pugh. Second heat of the third leg rides a win for outfit number 23, Gary Jackson and Carl Pugh. In second place, number five, Matt from Marola and Andy Wilson. In third place, number 51, Rick McCauley and uh, Phil Stoneman. Fourth place, number nine, Miles Simmons and Dave Hogan. Fifth place, number eight, Paul Bickley and Terry Madley. And sixth place, number 92, Paul Whitelam and Kevin Jones. 143.97 was the time. 54.32 the average speed. So 143.97, 54.32. So we move on to race 21 in your programme, they get underway and Duncan told us has made a very good start, Steve Smith is right there with him though and Steve Smith looking for a way through, oh they all get together in that first turn, there's a lot of changes, and Duncan told us is going to be passed again as they go down the back straight, no he isn't, he comes back again and looks that wide line round that pit bend, Oh, Steve Smith certainly with the lead at the moment. Much better ride from him. Duncan Toldo is trying to stay with him. It's Matt Terrell that's in third place at the moment. He was trying to get that second from Duncan Toldo. And incredibly, it was Robin Chris Winterburn that I was saying that could have perhaps got right up there on schedule with the leaders of the competition. And they've missed out on this one completely. Well, it's all very, very close at the front because Steve Smith and Carl Squirrel are having a much, much better ride. Duncan Tolest and Nicky Owen trying to stay with them, making sure they don't get too far away. They'll be looking to make a challenge on this one, spin, I'm sure. They close up going down the back straight. Well, they've certainly beaten off the challenge from Matt Tour and Sean Yates, but now they can concentrate on trying to get past Steve Smith. But Steve Smith holding a very tight line with one more lap to go. Well, he's a lot, lot closer this time as he goes into the top bend. Well, there must be great disappointment to Robin Chris Winterburn. They've been with a chance because they've had another big ride here and staying right up with the uh, leaders of the competition. But it's all changed as we go to the checker flag this time because Steve Smith has pulled it out of the bag and he's got a race victory. Duncan Tollis in second, Matt Tyrrell in third, Andy Simons in fourth. Out there do lap scoring at your own club events and that sort of thing but I do hope you haven't put your results in yet because the official result of race 21 reads as a win for number 74 Duncan Solhurst and Nicky Owen in second place number 69 Matthew Tyrrell and Sean Yates 
In third place, number two, Steve Smith and Carl Squirrel. In fourth place, number 93, Andy Simons and Gary Bemister. In fifth place, number 25, Colin Blackburn and Martin Bailey. Sixth place, 148. That's Rob Winderburn and Chris Winderburn. The winning time was 145.05, 145.05, averaging 53.76, 53.76. And I can quickly explain to you, if you're all wondering what's going on, we were informed over the radio by the clerk of the course that two positions were gained by going on the inside of the track markers. Therefore, the rider gained an unfair advantage on the other two competitors. He therefore was taken back to places that he had unfairly gained. So it gives you 74, 69, 2, 93, 25 and 148.